Back at it like I never left with some more Black Clover anime episode breakdowns. I took a week off because I was making a different type of video, but I'm here now while I'm on it this week. And you guys should already know how this whole thing is gonna work. I'm gonna watch the episode on my lonesome, then I'll be right back to talk about it with y'all. So see you then. Real quick, before we get into the new episode 165, I want to touch on 164 since I didn't get to. And right off the bat, I want to talk about this thing here, the Tree of Quillafoth, I think is how you pronounce it. But yeah, this tree is apparently a magic channel that connects this world with the demon world or the underworld. And in order for the Dark Triad to awaken it, to activate it, to use it, they need a World Tree Mage and a Dark Mage. And that is where William and Yami come in. Also, when the Tree of Quillafoth is in use, it will release demons into this world and they will wreck shop. They will wreak havoc. Yami's retort to Dante's whole explanation about the tree and the demons and all that was A1 though. He says, guess I'm gonna have to take you out here and now. Bro said, so what you talking about? You think I'm gonna go willingly help you create a tree? I'm gonna plant this sword in your spine. That's the only thing we grow in today. And after that, in episode 164, we had Charmy and Leo's fights and they were okay. I liked Charmy's way more. I just thought it was cooler. And I kind of have like a bias against Leo. Whenever he's on screen, I'm just like, like, I'm sleep, bro. He's just, I don't want to say ridiculously boring as a character to me, but that's the only thing that I can think of right now to describe him, so that's what I'm gonna go with. I will give credit where credit is due, though. His line against the dude that he was fighting who didn't like to get hurt was awesome. He said, if you aren't prepared to get hurt on the battlefield, stay off it. Fire, dude. Literally, because then he hit him with fire. Anyways, 164 then ends with the supposed defeat of Tongue Dude right here, and Vanika appearing on the scene before Noel, Mimosa, and Aloro. On to episode 165, though, and the start to this episode was really, really good because it had possibly the best introduction to a character in Black Clover ever. Because it begins with this guy talking about how there could be an intruder from the Clover Kingdom in the Spade Kingdom. But bro over here is like, no way. That would be suicide. Then we got said supposed intruder being confronted by just random bro number 65. And he summons a water snake saying, hey, you must be the intruder. It's time for you to come with me. But then the man does some clean. He goes ahead and fades into his own shadow. But the cleanliness of his movements don't stop there. Because what he does after, I'ma just play it right here, he comes up out of this man's shadow, grabs him by the ankles, and then I'm gonna play it again. Here we go, here we go, and pulls him into his own shadow. That is the definition of awesome. It is so simple, yet so effective. He comes out the shadows afterwards, though, and then it is revealed that he is a part of the Black Bulls. Now, as I stated before in a previous Black Clover episode breakdown, I am not currently reading the manga, but I know who this character is. This is Notched, or Notched. I believe. I think it is actually knocked because the name is German, I think. But anyways, I know a tiny bit about this dude. I know he's the vice captain of the Black Bulls and I know what he looks like. Aside from that though, I know nothing else. I don't even know what his magic is. Is it like shadow magic? Don't spoil it for me in the comment section, but just tell me if I'm right in saying shadow magic. Anyhow, after the awesome introduction of Noct, we then get the reveal that this dude isn't dead. And in fact, neither are any of the other Dark Disciples that the Black Bulls defeated. Well, the Black Bulls and Leo. Oh, and I almost forgot, gotcha too. Thanks to Lady Vanika and the curses that she put upon her Dark Disciples, none of them will die unless she is defeated. Yuck. Even though all the once defeated enemies get back up, the Black Bulls are just undeterred. This honestly, one of the hardest shots in a series. For me, for me. I just love the overwhelming determination from all three. And it's captured so perfectly in all of their faces and with the one sentence, bring it on. We'll defeat you as many times as it takes. 
You freaks! I also love the fact that this dude is smiling. Luck never changed, bro. But anyways, we then get them throwing down. We get Noelle, Aloro, and Mimosa getting into action against Vonica and Tongue Man. Vonica kinda... It kind of bodies Noelle and Loro, not really in terms of like doing physical damage to them, but she just counters their spells so easily in the beginning. And unfortunately for Mimosa, she is left dealing with food. How can you even fit that tongue back inside your mouth? She's left dealing with this dude. He's got his tongue all wrapped around her. I don't even want to show it. Isn't she like 17? But even though I don't want to show it, I kind of got to, to compliment Mimosa. Because even though she is trapped right now, she said, hey, if you gonna hold me still, I'ma hold you still too. Welcome to the stalemate. Noelle and Loro then figure out what the Dark Triad are doing. I say Noelle and Loro, but it's really just Loro figures it out and then she explains what they're doing to Noelle. Also, Haiki, this is one of the coolest powers in Black Clover. All this knowledge at your disposal. This is some wild imagery though, bro. Golly, these demons looking kind of scary. I wouldn't want to meet this thing in real life or that thing. That one I feel like I could, you know, kind of kind of talk to him. Maybe. I don't know what I'm talking about, bro. They're all demons and none of them give off friendly vibes. The only vibe they got is hate. And this just so happens to be that hate on display. If the demons are released, they will defeat, destroy, and kill over 90% of the population on this continent. Golly, bro, y'all better hope that the tree of Quilalathava don't get activated. With this new information at our hero's disposal, though, it causes them to kick the plan into motion. The plan that Loro has come up with because she battled Vanika before. And that plan is to create this massive spell. Spell, the Ludic Sanctuary. And this massive spell reduces Vonica's blood magic uh, effectiveness, I think, by like 50% or something like that. All I know is that it reduces it, okay? And it boosts Noelle's magic because, you know, she got water magic. And this boost in power actually causes her to transform into a mermaid. And this form is pretty sick, I'm not gonna lie. But hey, if you thought a little water was gonna solo Vonica down, you are wrong. I mean, not even a devastating pierce is enough to slow her down. She just increases her devil power to 50%. And one of my favorite things about this episode, I think, is that she just increases her devil power over time, again and again. I like it. Yuck. But despite the yuckness from Tongue Man, we then get a really nice scene between Loro, Noelle, and Mimosa. And in this, Loro professes all of her worries to her friends and lets them ultimately know that what she is afraid of is dying. And she starts crying too. I never really cared about Loro's character before. It's not that I didn't like her, I just didn't care, but this made me care. I'm like, bro, Loro, if you need protection, call on me too. I'll get in the mix. But she don't need me though. She got Mimosa and Noelle and they're fighting for their dear friend. And that's why they can't lose in the battle against the Dark Triad and their Dark Disciples. Oh my gosh, dude, Vonica look kinda illy, but she is falling directly into their plan because said plan was to make her use more of her devil powers. And that lets them use their trump card. It's Nero. Look at that mana method sealing magic eternal Risen. How are you gonna get out of this, Vonica? You got no hope. But anyways, after Nero does what she does, that is the end of the episode. And with that said, that is now the end of this video. So, thank you all very much for watching. I hope that you all enjoyed. If you did, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you all in the next one. Peace, everybody! Yeah.